Okay, now that you've got your bottle rendered out, so we're ready to start uh, designing uh, for the label. So when you're creating your label, uh, you're going to be creating some variations of your label. So I require at least three variations, and you'll be comping them up this way on your bottle. Here are some that are done in the past. This person did four. This person did six. So I require a minimum of three, but you, you know, always encourage to give me more. Now what's going to be on your bottle is your ligature, most likely that'll be at the top. And then you will have the product name. Okay, so whatever, you know, we did a ligature TB, the product was called Tart Burst. So you're going to be having the product name here. Okay, now the trick on this is these need to be creative fonts. And you cannot use a font that was in the ligature. So whatever these fonts were in the ligature, you will not use them again. They have to be different fonts. Now you have optional to put graphics in here. Okay, you don't have to put graphics in here, but it's optional. You can. Okay, a lot of times we do that. Then you'll put the product uh, description in here, whatever it is. In this case, this one's infused ciders. This one is uh, heat-infused honey. Then you'll be in, in the end. You'll end up with three uh, variations of it, three flavors, so to speak. Uh, so you'll have to have a text where you're going to be putting the flavor, and then you'll have a uh, fluid amount that'll be in here too. So these are the things that we'll be putting on your uh, design. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is to get your ligature out of Illustrator because we're going to comp in Photoshop. So here's an example of a file with a typical file where we're designing ligatures. We have our copies out here and then our final presentation in here. Now when we want to kick this out, we only want to kick out the specific ligature which is the one we're going to use. So what you want to do is adjust this artboard so it's only the size of the one you're going to be using. To do that, there's a tool right over here. It's called the artboard tool. And as soon as you click on this, you'll see that I have borders on this. And so I can come in. And this can always be readjusted later. It's not like I'm losing any of the information. I want a little bit of space around it. Don't crop it in too tight. Okay, and then I want to turn off my labeling so it's not in there. All right, so what's going to do is it's going to export just this piece out. All right, now we're going to be taking it into Photoshop. So I already have my Photoshop prepped where I opened up my bottle that I rendered out of Fusion that I'm going to be doing my comp on. Okay, now one of the things I want to make sure I understand is how big this is because I want to bring the logo in so it's a little bit larger than what I need. You can always scale things down in Photoshop, but you can never scale something up in Photoshop. So if I go up here to image, image size, and I change this to make sure this is on pixels, uh, it might default to percent, just change it to pixels, and it'll tell me. So the width of this image is 1,600 pixels, so I don't need it that large, maybe 1,200 pixels. So I'm gonna try that. So all I have to do now is to go in here, file, uh, export save for web, and then inside of here, uh, I'm going to change my width to 1200 pixels, and then I want to make sure this is on PNG 24, I want it to be transparent, okay, so it's going to drop that out of the background, we don't want the light in the background, and we want to make sure we set, we click this on that we want this to clip to the uh, clipboard because otherwise it's going to want to export the whole thing like this. So we want to make sure we're going clip to the artboard and then it will only 
export this out. So it's going to export this out. Now it's converting it from vector to raster, but it's going to be bigger than what I need. So I don't have to worry about uh, the edge of the pixels, transparent background. So then I save this out. Okay, so we're going to be copying in Photoshop. So then you'd come in here and we say open and then we would pick it. We bring it in and then you'll see it's nice and big and it's transparent background. So now I can just drag that onto here. Close this now. And you can see this logo's bigger than what I need. So that's good. And so the it'll be nice and um, clean. And then what I'm going to want to do before I size it down is you want to right click on it and you want to convert it to a smart object. So what this does is you'll see a little icon down here. It means that anything that I do, I can revert it back. So like if I come in here and I uh, adjust this down to fit on the bottle and then I decide later for whatever reason I need it to go back to what it was. I can go over here, I can right click, and I can go reset the transformation and it will go back. So basically what it's doing is once we convert it to a smart object, is it's kind of like we're not manipulating the object itself, we're manipulating a copy of the object and we can always revert it back to what it was before. Okay, so the one I'm going to be using is this one. Okay, this is the one I already brought in. And so it's uh, pretty big. I probably never would use it this big on the bottle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a smart object. And then I can uh, size it down. Now, a little trick on sizing things. Uh, Control T will bring up your, um, your handles where you can size it. Now, if you grab the corners in Photoshop, you don't have to hold anything down. It will restrict it to only where you won't be able to distort it. Okay, In order to distort something, I, I have to actually hold down the Shift key, and then I can distort it, which we don't want to do. Okay. Now, one of the things I do quite often is, is I'm placing it pretty much centered to where I want it. If I hold the Alt key down, when I drag a corner, it scales to its center instead of, if I don't, it scales to the corner of the opposite of what you're dragging. So I would scale it to its center. Okay, so I'm going to start off with something about this big. Now another thing that I'm going to want to do is I've got rulers on, okay. Uh, that's um, to get your rulers on that uh, what you want to do is is control R so control R turns the rulers on and off so you want to turn a ruler on let me get my tools over here and then you can drag a guide in so I can drag a guide here and drag a guide to the See to here, and then I can drag a guide to the center. This will help me when I'm placing my objects. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is uh, this is called Hive and Harmony. So I'm going to come in here, make sure I have black for my uh, everything's being done in black. So I just click in here, and then I can type in um, Hive, and I'm using all lowercase letters, and I'll show you why I'm doing that. And my go-to font that I normally use is uh, Arial. So that's kind of what I comp with is Arial. And a nice thing about Arial, it's a good kind of plain font, and we have lots of versions. There's a narrow version, 
regular, there's a bold, there's a black, a lot of good versions. I'm just going to go with a, a bold right now. Now, I normally comp with lowercase letters, and the reason I do that is sometimes I want upper lowercase, sometimes lowercase, sometimes uppercase. But if I type it with lowercase, this button right here, okay, now the palette I'm on is a character palette. So those go under window, and we want the character palette, okay. And that has these tools on here, so I can make this, and now it's going to make it all uppercase. But if I wanted to go to lowercase, I just have to click this button to go back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put uh, Hive and the and ampersand on the same le uh, line. So we're going to go Hive in a space and then an ampersand and sign. And then I'm going to control T and then I'm going to drag it out so that it's, I'm going to, and I'm not going to get it too accurate because the first thing I'm going to do is change this font. So now I can come in and I can start uh, exploring different kinds of fonts that I might want to use for this. So... I have a lot of different fonts that I've used in the past. I might want to go with something like this. Okay, and this particular one. And so I'll go to Control T, drag it. And I'm going to get that right inside of my guides because what I want to do is a centered design. So I might want to go with something like that. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is kind of comp different things. So over here, I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and I'm going to drag up, and I'm going to make a copy of this. And now I'm going to try something else in here. Maybe I want to go with something a little more decorative. Let's try this. Now, I think I like that this is kind of decorative. It has kind of a, I don't know, it kind of has a minstrel feel to me. I, it has kind of a, a fun kind of feel. So I think it's almost like a medicine man that would sell medicine. So I kind of like the feeling of that. You know, uh, the fonts as you're picking them have kind of emotional content to them. I also like that this one not as tall as this one because we're going to use the word harmony and that was going to have to be a condensed font like this. So maybe I don't want this one condensed. As a matter of fact, let's do this one and let's use harmony on this. Now, what I've done is intentionally misspelled this because I wanted to show you that while we're doing this, you have a spell check you can use in here. So I can go up here, check spelling, and then it's going to come out, and it's going to say, okay, what the heck is that? Is that supposed to be harmony, which it is, and I can set it to ignore it or change it, or I can type something in. So I'm going to say change it, and then it's going to correct that for me, and then it's going to come in and says, okay, that's all good now. All right, so now... I can come in and adjust this. And that's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so that's one version. I would probably take these two and put them in a folder. Okay, I'll just leave that as group one right now. And then I could try another solution, okay? And then I would do another solution and another solution. I'd do different variations. But for right now, I'm going to go with this one just for this demonstration purposes. All right, then we're also going to need to, the next thing is our um, descriptor. 
So um, mine is going to be uh, heat infused. I'm going to put that on one line. I'm going to hold down the shift key and honey. Okay, so now I'm going to want this to be a different font. So we're off to the races again. Let's find another creative kind of font. Maybe I'll try a script. So I'm going to turn my capitals off. I may decide to use it all lowercase. I may like that. Okay, let's pull it down a little bit. To tell you the truth, I think maybe I might like that for honey. Let's try that for honey. Yeah, I mean like that. All right, let's pick something out for our heat infused. Yeah, I may like that. Now, by the way, periodically, I don't want to see the guides, okay? Uh, control H will hide your guides and I'm gonna allow this honey to touch right there so this kind of becomes one thing I kind of like that so I'm going to group these together all right that looks pretty good okay so now I'm gonna go for my flavor so we're going to go in here, and I'm going to switch this back to Arial. By the way, you can pick fonts. You can see these are the stars. I can pick fonts that are kind of my favorites, and when I click right here, it's going to narrow that down. Okay, so I'm going to go to Arial here, and I'm going to pick... Uh, next, let me switch that. I'm going to go to uh, Black. Okay, and this is going to be, uh, this is based on peppers, so Carolina, so I'm going to go Carolina, and this is going to be Reaper, it's a type of spicy pepper, and I think in this particular case, I want to keep I'm going to keep this fairly clean, not a lot of flavor, so to speak. This is a certain flair. This is a certain flair. So this is more informational. So I'm not going to go very, I'm just going to leave it, I think, uh, at Arial. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my um, alignment. So I'm going to do uh, this. As a center alignment and kind of center this. And I'm going to want to do that with this Reaper too. And I'm going to expand this out, uh, give it wider kerning. I don't have to go all the way out to my control H to turn my guides back on, but I think I might try, I don't know, about two, maybe 260, at least more, is it 300? 
that's pretty close. So I'll go with that. So this is, has fewer letters, so maybe 360 with this. So I'm getting something with kind of the same kind of flavor of spacing to it, but it doesn't have to go all the way out. It's still just centered. And then I'm going to make a copy of that. And I'm going to turn this back to zero spacing, maybe change this to bold, and I'm going to go down a little bit in size, maybe something like this. And then I'm going to change that to my net weight. Okay, this is looking pretty good. It's too tight to me on my height. So let's go ahead and go Carolina Reaper. I'm going to put that in a folder together. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put all of these in a folder together. Okay, and this is design one. I also can color code these so I can right click on this and go to color and I can give it a color to distinguish this okay now in this particular case I'm gonna make a copy of my uh, design so I'm holding down the alt key and I'm gonna drag this inside of here so I still have the original and here's a copy and now these can be together and now I'm going to size this down a little bit, so control T, and then I'm holding down the Alt key, and I can drag from this corner. And I'm going to go with something about like that, and I'll move that up. Okay, control H, and there's the first design. Okay, my first design. All right, so now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change my background color. And I'm going to grab this background that's here. So over here, I'm going to unlock this so this is no longer the background. And then I'm going to make a layer and drop it into the background. So this is our background. And I'm going to fill that with that gray, which is Control Delete. Control Delete fills with background color. Alt Delete fills with foreground color. So now I can go to Image Canvas Size. And I'm going to click here because what I want to do is add space over to the side. So this is going to be on the left. And I'm going to add it to the side. I'm going to change this to percent. And then I'm going to make it 300% on width and so this is going to add me space in here alt delete to fill that background color so uh, now I can grab the uh, the bottle and I'm holding down my control key to click on um, this design one and I'm holding down my alt key alt is copy and as I move this to the right it's going to make a copy okay so I'm going to move it to the right, and then as I move, as I start moving it to the right, okay, I hold down my shift key, and then it will move it um, directly across in alignment. Now, what I can do here is I want to crop out the background in this, but I want to leave it non-destructive. So if I just drag a box around this okay and then I click my mask here what it will do is mask out the background now I can go ahead and set this up and let's do this again so we'll go ahead and grab these two and then I'm gonna hold down the alt key and move it to the right hold, as I as I'm moving it hold down the shift key and then I'm going to get these so they're kind of equally spaced. Then I may decide to come in here and say, well, I'm going to crop it on the left right about there. 
drop it on the right, right about here. And I think I may gonna crop a little bit off the bottom. Okay, then there's my layout. All right, so now what I can do to clean this up some is I can drag this bottle. Usually I have to pull it up and then this one back on top of it. And that way this is all inside of this container and I can change the color to this. And then I'm going to do the same on this one. And we'll make this one the color. All right. So now I would come back in and I will start back on this one. And I'm probably going to leave this network weight uh, the same down here. And I'm going to start editing on this. So now what I may decide on this one is I'm going to put the and on a, on a layer by itself. So I'm just going to drag and make a copy of this. I'm holding down the Alt key. And so this one is just going to be the ampersand. And this one will be just hive. Okay, so now I'm going to go in here and choose a, a different font for Hive. And uh, let's go with something kind of bold. I kind of like that. I wonder what that... I wonder what that ampersand looks like. It's okay. Now, here's a little trick you can do is you can just highlight this and then using your arrow down keys, you can go through your fonts one by one. And I can just kind of go through here and say, well, you know, ooh, I like that. Let's go with that. All right, so back to my hive. And let's get that back down. You can put guides back in here if you want to. So hive. And there's going to be my end. And then we're going to do our harmony. I'm still going to need a condensed font for my harmony because it's such a long word. Now, I, I kind of like that, but it's got, that's going to be too thin to be able to print on a bottle. So that's not a good font for us. Kind of like that. So what I'm going to do is hold on to that, hold down my Alt key and drag up to make a copy. And now I can go in and uh, find a different one. So keeping the one, but still looking for some other ones. I kind of like that. Hmm. Maybe I want to go with the serif to offset that. That might be interesting. Let's bring this guy in back onto my H's here. Help me visually down here. So this is still... By the way... Um, if you hold down the alt key and you right click on something, it will select it over here. So that's how I'm able to keep figuring out what's over here is just right clicking. Control T and pull that in. OK, 
Okay. I'm just going to call this HH. Okay, so now this has a distinctly different look and feel than this one does. Okay. And then I would just keep doing that. Okay. And this is how I kind of break my stuff in. Now, at some point I may decide, well, I want to put a graphic in here, like maybe a B or something. Okay, so I may go back and uh, move things around to put a graphic inside of it. I might do that too. The graphics could be um, something that's recognizable, like a honeycomb or a bee or a, a beehive, something like that. But there could be just graphic elements too, like stripes. So they could be just graphic elements. You don't have to put graphic elements in, but you can put graphic elements in. Okay, so this is how I go about uh, blocking my stuff in. And so let's go ahead and look at this. And you'll see this is where, uh, because this is ciders, I thought, okay, a cider, that's kind of uh, created inside of a barrel, a wooden barrel. And so I thought a graphic of a wooden barrel uh, would be nice. And so I incorporated a graphic with this. Okay, hopefully this helps you understand how to uh, block your stuff in. Now later, we'll go in and we'll incorporate color into them. Okay, but right now we're just we're just blocking them in in black and white. So here's where I've actually finished doing uh, one. This was different than what we I was just doing, but this is a, a set that I did. Used a B, okay, in here and here. Did not use one over here. So th threes are three examples. Then uh, at a certain point we decide, you know, you're gonna present these to me, and then I'll pick one. Once I've picked the one, then we'll come back and do color variations. So we're going to go back and render the bottle, but this time we'll render the bottle more white. We want it to be a little uh, less transparent, so we want the uh, or a little bit more transparent. We want the uh, background to be white and just barely can see the bottle, and then we uh, block colors into it. Okay, So we decide the one, and then once we have the one, then we do color variations of that. Okay, hopefully that helped you. All right, thank you very much.